What's up YouTube and welcome to this text-based fire tutorial. Now there's a link in the description down below to everything you're going to need, a small palette and a couple of fonts if you choose to use them. And the canvas size for today is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. If you're new here I post Procreate content every single week so hit that subscribe button down below. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas we're going to go up to our colours. And we're going to grab these two colors here that we're going to use for the background color. So we're first of all going to grab the second color in the second row, drag and drop it onto your canvas. And then we go to our colors again and we go ahead and select the first color on the second row. If we then go to our selection tool, if we use the freehand option and color fill is turned on, we can simply tap here and make a little corner space up here. And then when you join your start point, you'll end up filling that space in with the color and tap on your selection tool when you're done. And then all we're gonna do is go up to our adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right. And this just creates a nice little bit of color in the background. So something about sort of 70% will do the trick and then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Next, let's go ahead and add the actual text in the middle. So we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna select what is black down here at the very bottom left of our palette. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our actions, add, and add text. Then we're going to double tap on the text. And we'll get this extra menu pop up. We're going to go to keyboard first of all, which will pop up at the bottom. And we're going to type in fire. And then we're going to double tap on the text again. And we'll get the little sub menu. And we're going to tap on the font just here. And inside our fonts, we're going to scroll up towards the top and we're going to find this font here, the Ananda font. And then we're going to make that a little bit bigger. So increase the size up and I think we're going to go for something around about sort of the 110 point mark then grab your cursor and move that into the center of the camera so i think we could actually get away with making that a little bit bigger as well so we're going to do exactly that. i'm going to scale it up with the node there in the top right with the uniform option selected and just pop that in the middle and i'm going to go for something about that so if i tap on the node there it's 1148 by 700 and then tap on your cursor when you're done so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our layer. We're going to swipe on it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, we're going to tap on the layer and we're going to rasterize it, which will then make it no longer a text layer. We're going to tap on the layer and alpha lock it. We're going to go to our colors and grab the orange that we're still using for the background colors still. So the second row, the first color, go back to your layer, tap on the layer and fill it and then tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. Then we're going to go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right and blur this right out up to something about sort of 65%, 70%, somewhere in there. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Now all we've done there is just create a nice little glow in behind the text. Now we can actually get started on the actual text and creating the fire effect. So we're going to go to our layers and we're going to work within the layer first of all. So we're going to create a new layer above the fire text layer. It's got the little A symbol here. We tap on that layer and we clipping mask it to the actual text. If we tap on the text and tap on it again and use the option of select, we're going to first of all turn off color fill, which is really important to do. So tap on that, invert the selection. So we've now selected everything around the outside of the text rather than it itself and go to your colors. And we're going to grab this color here, the second color on the first row, grab your layers, go to that layer above that we created the empty layer tap on that layer and use the option of fill. Now what we'll have done is you can see by the layer, we've filled in everything around the outside of the fire, but because it's clipped to it, you technically can't see anything for a minute. We're going to swipe on this layer to the left and duplicate it because we need a yellow version. So now we've duplicated and we've got the orange one. We're going to tap on that layer and alpha lock it. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here in the top left of the palette. Go back to your layers, tap on that layer and fill it and then tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. So now we've built up the two colors we need, we can start to glow them on the inside. So we're gonna to go to the orange one first of all. We're gonna to go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna swipe from left to right and we're gonna add in a 10% Gaussian blur, which is gonna bring in the orange and tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then go to your layers and go up to the yellow layer. Tap on the N that stands for normal and scroll down and change that to A for add. Then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, 
and swipe from left to right. And then from here, we're going to add in a rough sort of four or five percent glow and then tap on your adjustments when you're done. So now we've added a glow on the inside. Let's go ahead and start adding the glows on the outside. Let's go to our layers. We're going to go underneath the text layer. So it's still with the A symbol. So we're going to tap underneath and create a new layer. We're going to tap on the text layer that we want here. So tap on it and use the option of select. Then go back to your layers. And using the same color we've got for a moment, tap on your empty layer underneath. Tap on it and fill it. Now you'll see that you've got a yellow version of the text. Swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, tap on the layer and alpha lock it. Let's then change our color to the second color on the top row. Go to your layers, tap on the alpha locked layer that we were just working on and fill it. And then tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. So now what we've done is we've got the opposite of this. So we've got two layers underneath where we can create a glow on the outside. Now for the outside, we're going to work on the orange one still. Go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, swipe from left to right, and we're going to add in a 14% glow on the outside. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then go to your layers, go to the yellow layer above, tap on the N and change it to add again. Then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right. And for this one, we're going to add in roughly a sort of seven or eight percent glow on the outside and then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Now this is the basis of the text and you can already see we've got a nice little glow started. We can start to build up now the fire effect. Now for this, we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go to the top of all of our layers and create a new layer. We're going to tap on the N straight away and change that to add. So change it to A for add. Then go to your colors and grab the color in the top left of the palette again. Then we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go all the way down to organic and we're going to use the hemp brush. Now what we're going to do is my brush size is set to 8%. We're going to focus our attention towards the top edges and the right hand side because we're going to push the flames in that direction shortly and we're just going to draw along the lines and you can already see it will add in this really cool little effect and with the add on the layer it's going to really start to emphasize some of those warmer tones now what you can do is you can start off very light like that and then with your brush just emphasize your pressure so just drop it up and down create little bubbles here and there now try not to repeat your pressure too much like that but then just go back over yourself and then occasionally just press quite firm or let go with your pressure and just create a really random scattering of this sort of effect. And then under here, we can create some little flicker of the flame at the end there. And what we also want to try and do is we want to create nice little flickers off the top here. So you can press very lightly with your brush and just create these tiny little flicks. And the lighter you press, of course, the smaller the little flick is. Now, what I do want to try and do is right on the end here, is just emphasize the real corner up here. So I want this F to have the brightest, sort of biggest part of the flame up here in this area. And then I'm gonna start adding in some nice little flicks off the top of it. So nice little tiny little points. Now this will take the longest out of the entire tutorial. But once you nail this, we've got everything you need to create the full effect. Let's then do the same here as well. So I'm just pressing quite firm there, as you can see dropping on lots of color. And then go along this line here pressing with different varying amounts of pressure and then you can create nice little flicks guide the lines into nice little points you want to avoid the lines looking quite sort of uniformed you want them to vary and have some points like that that just randomly stick out that's cool little flickers here with the flames that looks awesome let's do the same there too and then we're going to just do exactly the same here and follow this entire routine for the entire word and just add in that really cool fire effect. Now I won't skip at all. We're just gonna do it together and you can see where I go ahead and add in my color as we go and then see what things I come up with as we do it. Now this is part of my text Tuesday series. So if you're interested in any sort of more text based tutorials, there's a grass one and a sand one, check out the channel and also hit the subscribe button for weekly Procreate tutorials. Now we've done that, let's go ahead and go to the eye as well. So right on the top here, Add in some nice fire on the top and then create some nice little random scatterings of color. And if you create little random flicks and curls, I think that looks really good. So I create like a C shape really quickly and only picks up a little bit of it. And by doing that, you can create some nice little flame dancing lines at the top. 
add in some little flicks here and there as well. You can add in big flicks. You don't have to necessarily make them really small. I'm going to move over to here. Add in a nice one there. So again, big flick there with some color. Just make sure it connects nicely and you, you sort of guide the user where the flame's coming from. Over the top there, that looks good. And then you kind of, as I mentioned at the very beginning, just sort of cover your outlines where you can. And then just follow the text. That's your guide. And then create all the little flicks off of that. So run that around there. Create some little flicks. And you can do that for the most of the text. Just create those outlines. And drop in the little scattering. So as long as you follow the same routine, outline first. Then go back over yourself and vary your pressure in certain areas. Create that randomness to it. And also in the area you want it to be emphasized, like the top of the E there, that looks pretty good. Do a little bit around the bottom edge there. Over here, I'm going to go quite firm onto the end of the E, just to add in a nice little ending amount of fire. Like so, that looks pretty sweet to me. Nice little flick on the end, can really punch that out as well. Zooming out, you can get an idea for your entire design and where you've added it in. Now, don't spend too much time on this in terms of getting very minor details because we are going to blur this out. So we do want to fill it in and then go ahead and move on to the next part of the process, which is blurring the whole process out and creating the dancing sort of look to the flames. But this is creating the foundations for it. Now, you want to be kind of brave up here with the F and create some nice big areas of color and go into the F as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the outside. It can be on the inside, that's fine. Little random bits there. And then maybe on the F, I'm gonna go just on the underside there, drop in some little sparkles of fire. And then maybe a little bit down here, just to let that run out towards the end, create some nice little flicks in there. Flickers popping up look really good with this effect. Dropping in some of those as we go around. And taking a look at it, is there anywhere else I could emphasize? I think maybe a little bit more on there, maybe a little bit more here. Random little flickers and I'm just dashing with my brush, creating like little lines. Just trying to make sure it's nice and random. Now you've done that, we've got everything we need to start making them all dance together with the flames. So let's do exactly that. Let's go to our adjustments and we're gonna to go to motion blur. And with motion blur, you have to draw it in the direction that you want the motion to go. So we wanna sort of start down here and push it up towards the top right. So do exactly that. And we want to add in a 14% blur there in that direction. And all your flames now will start to have this really lovely soft glow on them. If we tap on our adjustments, if we go to our layers and we swipe it to the left and duplicate it. But what we're going to do with this top one is we're going to go to our adjustments, liquify, and then we're going to use the 12 right option or 12 left either either. And you can see my settings down here. We're going to go ahead and just push this with our brush, push it up towards the top right ideally and just create some different varying shapes with our liquify tool. And you can hold down with your brush and they'll start to dance, create nice little twirls and curls. And push them in the direction up towards the top right, but doing this a few times in certain areas, you'll create these lovely little flicks where it starts to create like a nice little tail off. And you can hold it down in certain areas, as I mentioned, and let it run into the text and just hold down and see what happens. But as long as you start in the end to push it up towards the top right, you're good with this effect. So just making that all dance like that, pushing that flame up like so. And go over all your large areas of light, just creating a varying. Now what we're doing is by doing this, we've duplicated the layer and now we've got two that are going to sort of create some depth in our flames. So we've got one, like look how nice that looks. So we've got one layer that's underneath, which is the foundation of the flame in a sense. And then we've got this one here that we're using to create like a, a layer of that fire on top of itself. So just creating all these random little twirls and curls, pushing the flame now. Sometimes it may end up a little bit unnatural. So you just need to go back over your line and just adjust it to make sure it's going in that direction. I'm going to do exactly that, continue over all the different areas that we added the flames in. And I like it when we add some nice little bits here that are a bit loose. And then we can push them around a little bit more, a bit more like that. Twirl this all out, right towards the top especially, we want to create those leading lines that just run out. 
Make sure we don't miss anything. Going back. Down here. Just change them up. And it really, as I keep saying, adds that beautiful dancing effect. And now we're starting to get more of a 3D look to our flames already. Going back over any points just to make sure we can make any other adjustments. Something like that looks good. That looks lovely. I missed a little bit here. So spend some time on this, just trying to get your lines right how you want them. And eventually you'll end up with a second set of flames to the one that we just added. With a varying different style to the one that we had before. And then we can go ahead and repeat the process for the background of the text. So that's the actual text itself with the first layer of fire. We then go to our layers. And we created these two layers here in the background. So we created a soft yellow glow around the text and then we created this bigger orange glow. What we're going to do is with these two layers, we're going to pinch them together onto one layer. We're going to swipe it to the left and we're going to duplicate it. And then the bottom one, tap on it and then go to the N and lower the opacity down to 40%. And then the top one, before we carry on, tap on the N and lower that down to 60%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to change the layer option to add. Now what we're going to do is on both these layers, we're going to create some more flames and some more dancing look to everything. So this one here with the add effect on it, go to your adjustments, liquefy, and then just alter your brush size down or up to 30% roughly. And we're just going to push the flames a little bit up towards the top right again. Now this is just constantly creating more and more depth in the flames. And just push these up you're going to start to see 12s go a bit further and that's fine because this is a bigger area we don't want it to sit too close to the flames that we just made at the main point of the fire should i say and just continue to push those up up to the top right and especially up here we want to try and grab some of that text that we're trying to edit and push it upwards and then every time you do and you get a bit of momentum behind it you can push it and it will just just for a second after you let go, it will just start to create more of a dance. And just make sure we don't end up with some soft lines. We want to create some nice twirly lines. So you may have to hold your pen down in certain areas like so there. Just to create more of a twirl rather than just pushing a blurry bit of the text upwards. So like that. If you hold down for a second and let it come with you, you can create those beautiful flames like that. Just running off upwards. So like that. Continue to do it until you're happy with how much you've added in the background there. And something like that's already getting pretty close. I want all these lines here around the bottom, although I've not touched them just yet, just to be sort of dispersed a little bit. So I'm just going to run my pen over all of the areas of the text just to make sure there's nothing that's sat too sort of uniformed. And we want to make sure everything's dancing nicely in those flames. And then when we're done, we're going to go up to our layers. We're going to go down a layer to the one that we set to 40%. So this is like a really faint version in the background. Go to your adjustments, liquefy, and again, just push these flames really far up now. So you can, if you want to increase your brush size to about 35% and just push these flames quite high and up into the distance. But these are the ones that sit right at the back and just create all that depth in the design. That looks beautiful. Just letting some of those lines just dance upwards. Yeah, I started quite low there and just pushing the text up, pushing it upwards towards the top edge, moving those lines away, I'm trying to create some nice twirls in there just the same as we did before. So just running my pen now over everything and then just letting go once I create some nice motion and movement in that. Just trying to push that upwards. Now, if at any point you feel like it's not moving upwards enough, you can simply go ahead and tap on 12 right and use the option of push. If you reduce your brush size just to make sure you don't end up pushing too much out of the way, you can come in here and just push some of the maybe the bottom edges up a little bit, but also just grab the top and just literally just push some of these letters upwards, creating more distance between it where it initially was. So I'm going to do exactly that, just creating some a bit more distance and moving those 12s and exaggerating them a little bit, but then also sort of tucking them in at the bottom. Just pushing them up a little bit. And we can do exactly that with the previous layer. So if we tap on our adjustments and we go back to our layers, now we've got our two layers stacked on top of each other. We can go to the one that we set to add above 
and go back to adjustments and liquify and the push version now and just make any adjustments we need to so maybe tighten up some areas bring it maybe a little bit closer to the text in certain places push those lines out create your flames and make them a little bit more exaggerated you can expand on some of the twirls and the curls that you made or also bring them back in if you want to just you know reduce them create the opposite effect but just creating some tidying up creating it so that it's nice and tight towards the bottom of the letters but nice and flowing towards the top i think that creates the best version of this effect and if you need to you can reduce your brush size really small to get into any areas like in here maybe tighten those up a little bit more push those lines upwards creating more glows more dancing lines like so I'm just going to create a nice little flick here because with the push tool if you have any little flicks you can go ahead and just really emphasize them and push them and drag them out which will really create that longer look to the flame tighten up this area here but exaggerate this one here and now once you've done that go up to your layers and go to the second layer at the top which is the original flame layer at the top there we're going to go to that layer we're going to do the liquify effect on this as well so we're going to go to liquify Go back to the option of twirl right and then just brush your pen over here and create some big twirls. So if you want to, you could increase your brush size or even your momentum or distortion and have a play with your effects and just create some really lovely dancing twirls in there. This will really finally distort it to the level that we need and create that lovely little flick. Now, when we zoom in, you'll end up with these awesome little twirls here that add in a lot of really fine detail, which is why we left this point right to the end just so we can emphasize a lot more of those 12s where necessary. Now you may make some adjustments like that. You know, you may have pressed too firm or for too long and that's fine. You can just undo it as you go with the liquify effect. It's really forgiving. If we actually zoom in, I'm gonna make it quite small now and just create some more 12s in here. And you can hold your pen down in certain areas. And as I mentioned, we left it right to the end because this just adds the final little extra bit of detail in my opinion, which Again, gives you those awesome little twirls up in here, awesome twirls down here, pushing this outwards as we just did before, creating those dancing lines. And then I think if we pinch out with two fingers, we end up with the final version of the fire itself. Now I'm gonna make one adjustment to mine because I want the flames to be more top heavy. I'm gonna go to my eraser. I'm gonna go to airbrushing and the soft brush. Now on the same layer we're working on, just reduce your brush size down and towards the bottom here, just get rid of this down here. Just emphasizing the top edge a little bit more than the bottom. So I'm just sort of cutting out the bottom down here, letting the very brightest parts sit at the top. Now what we can go ahead and do is add in the text that we want to put above and below. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. I'm gonna go right to the very top. Let's change our color. And you're gonna to wanna to select the fourth color on the top row. Then we're gonna to go to our actions we're going to go to add text and we're going to double tap on the text you're going to want to tap on your font and you're going to want to find the oliver blush font that i've included in the description down below and if you don't know how to install fonts there's a link in the description down below to one of my videos where you can learn how to install fonts and then i'm going to go ahead and change the size to 22 and then i'm going to go to my keyboard i'm going to tap on the keyboard down here because i've got the pen in my hand it's going to be the small one and I'm going to type in there's a and grab my cursor and just drag that down and hit in the orange line to let me know I'm nice and centered in the middle of the design. Tap on my cursor and go to my layer. Swipe that to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and drag it underneath the text. Again, hit in that blue line now because it let me know I'm sort of centered with that text above. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. If you double tap on the text and then double tap on all of it again, grab your keyboard and I'm going to type in inside of you. And tap on my cursor when I'm done. And that's it. If I pinch in with two fingers and I go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this text based tutorial. As mentioned, there's a few more that you can take a look at on my channel. If you're new here, I post Procreate content every single week. So hit the subscribe button down below. And be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. There's a link to all my socials in the description down below. And a massive shout out to all my patrons. 
Patreon supporters get access to even more tutorials every single month that are exclusive to Patreon supporters, as well as early access to videos, sneak peeks of upcoming designs, and much, much more. There's a link to my Patreon in the description down below. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I'm using, the Sketchboard Pro that you can use code JOELCREATE to get 10% off of, or the paper light screen cover, or the pen tips grip and glove, there's links to everything in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next one.